boxes to builds, PXG, and we're going to talk about new models and how to do a shaft switch and some fitting ideas. Boy, that's a big one. Welcome back to my golf shop, Jim McCleary, and we are going to work on some PXGs, obviously. Um, a guy a little further north, I think it was further north. Michigan. He is further north, he's from Michigan. <laughs> All right, sent us a set of uh, wedges that were the sugar daddies. All right, and then a set of the irons, three through the wedge, the 311T Generation 3. Now, a couple of things that are different about these guys. Number one is you'll notice the plethora of weights, right? All those things that looks like somebody was drilling holes in there, those are weights, okay? Those are weights to adjust not only uh, a total weight, but how the club will react. So if you had some really heavy ones here, the, the tendency will be to get under the ball and you will get a little bit higher trajectory. The idea of putting it here is number one is so you don't flip it over, give you a little bit more, well, they're gonna say a controlled flight. That's what that's gonna be. Now, it, I mean, it's a good looking club. This particular one has a whole lot of heel and toe relief. So uh, certainly one of those that you can just do the, the Mickelson and, and watch it flop open and be good to go. The PXGs, which is no, it's a, no surprise, it's a hollow body. And if construction stays the same, it's full of the iguana spit. And it has even more than the previous generation. And again, same thing. Now in this one, it's a little bit more particular. If you notice, you've got in the middle, you've also got on the, on the ends, the toe and the heel, and then you got the toe. So you could heel weight this thing in order for you to make it more draw bias, or you could toe weight it more to make it more uh, draw or open bias or fade bias. And then you could go into the middle with just what you see there in order to get the ball to go a little higher. Same, same, same. And thing with the toe. Now, it has very little to zero offset, which is a good look for a lot of players, but if they're needing a little bit of help, that's what those weights are for. So now that we've, the other thing about this is, we, and I've done another video, and I think it's over here. Anyway, the, what we found out previously was that they take a special ferrule. So if you want a color or something else, you know. And the reason being is 335, 335. Get, watch this. Hear that? See how that wobble? All right, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of wobble. And how do you get rid of a lot of wobble? Well, you use the prescribed ferrule, which is that guy. All right, and you notice it's got a pretty long shoulder. It's got a long shoulder piece to go into a long shoulder fit. So it sits in there just like that. All right, and what that does is that shoulder takes up that wobble area. So now we know, yep, boxy build is done. No, not at all. So uh, the uh, clean looking irons, they're really, I mean, they are quite nice. Uh, it's purely up to you on the cost. I mean, that's always the big thing for it, right? Is it, is it worth the effort? And if you, if you think it is, then more power to you. So off of that, now what we're doing is we've repla we're, replacing, we're replacing the original prescribed KBS TGI 80s, and we're putting in a custom set of C-Taper Lights X-Flexes. All right, so let's talk about what we're getting ready to do and why. Now, this, I've got a, a fitting sheet that specs out KBS 80s. That would tell me that you're right, you're hunting the upper part of the regular range-ish. You could go into the stiff range depending on if you have the parallel tips or not. And then trim them to get just into the stiff range. Now you may not, you know, that may work. Apparently that was what's prescribed, so I'm gonna assume that that's what worked. And we wanna put in this C-Taper 110, it's a light, so it's gonna be closer to 120, between 115 and 120, probably in the high teens, and an X-Flex. So 
if you don't, I've never seen this guy. We've only talked over the phone, and and Mike apparently is a very aggressive swinger. Now, if you're swinging in the low 90s and you're a very aggressive swinger, you could easily be in an X flex. How the TGI 90s or the 80, 80s got in there, I don't understand. Now, he also says that his dispersion is all over the map. That's twofold, all right? That's twofold. And why is that? Well, <laughs> it could be because the club is light, and that's where Mike is going with this. It could be the club is light, and when you're aggressive and it's light and you lose it in your, in your transition, it's hard to find it and bring it back. That's number one. Number two, it could be the length of the club. All right? If you get too long a club, you don't make a very, very solid hit, and it can go in different directions because of you're, you're adjusting for that length. Okay, It could be you're hit it fat, could be hit it thin, could open and close. They just go all over the map. Length is very, very important to consistency. And that could be that reason. Now, on, on the, again, on the fitting, it prescribed basically a half of an inch short. He wasn't comfortable with that. And so, which brings me to my topic. Again, in a fitting, right, in a fitting, you should, there should be a testing phase. And the testing phase goes to find out certain parameters. And when you test for these parameters, it, it, you're isolating a certain thing, like length, okay? If you're going to a fitting and somebody just throws a stick under your arm and says, here, swing this, and let's see what you do, and we'll kind of go from there, and it feels like you're hunting and pecking, you probably are. And hunting and pecking is not much of a fitting. It's just it, all you are is guessing, and that's not right. You need to have a method in which you need, for which you stand. Now, it doesn't mean that one guy's method is more so than another. It's just you need to have a, a particular way you want to go down your fitting. Okay, for us, we look for length first. Length is can equal to consistency. And that's across the board. That's the reason why you see shorter driver lengths. That's the reason why you see longer, taller irons. It's just all these different things so you can make consistent ball strikes. Then you can work from there, whether it be flex, weight, offset, lie angles. It's purely up to the fitter, okay? But at least you have a place from which you started. If somebody just gives you a club and says, here, let's see how you're going to hit it, and then we'll make adjustments from there, I would tend to be skeptical. All right, now, now I will say this in the form, a lot of OEMs have done a lot of testing, and this testing incorporates what the most popular lengths are for different, uh, different categories and the average golfer. To get an OEM to go outside of that particular, what they know, is really, really hard. And that's the reason why you go get a custom fitting in case you need those really long or really short lengths or wanting to figure out what's going on, all right? So not say good or bad in between, it's just different. And I think more thorough, to be honest with you. So that's what this is about. So I either something went bad in the fitting to be so far out, because we, we have to assume that I have to assume that these shafts, the new ones we're putting in, the more stout, the more uh, weight, the higher flex is going to be what the golfer needs as opposed to what was put in them. And I don't, that, so that concerns me, all right, uh, because they're both top end, uh, top end fitters. And, and so that, when you go to these fittings, all right, when you go to fittings, go loaded with some questions on why do we have this length? Why do we have this flex? Why do we have this weight? Why do we have these, why, right? Why are you choosing some of these things? And let them explain it to you. And if it satisfies you, good to go, right? Now, the last and most important part is, are you getting the results that you went in there to get? In this case, if he was hitting a lot of, if he was hitting them far, but his dispersion was all over the map, Mm, that's an, and you're going to go try and be a low handicap guy, that's probably not where you wanted to be. Now, the other part is you don't want to be extraordinarily short for the, just for the sake of being straight either. There is going to be a good middle there somewhere. You just need to find it. So if your objective is to be the guy that hits us the furthest in your league, then that, that, keep in mind that's what you're going to get. If you're the guy that wants to be the most precise regardless, 
you know, that big around a landing area. And then you might, you may have to sacrifice something else. Is the I, you know, so have your goals established in your mind and tell your fitter so that they know what you're looking for so they can help you obtain your goals. <sighs> All right, so off the soapbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing before as we always have done. We're, we're weighing everything out. We're going to uh, spine and flow. And, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you. He asked for something that's never been asked of me before. And we'll go over it when they're all done. So give me a few when we go to uh, put them all together. And then we'll show you the final product. Welcome back to day, well, we'll call it two and a half. It's actually three instead of two. The reason being is we made a tactical error. The tactical error was is that I added the same amount of weight all the way through the set. Even after I looked at the weights uh, in the lob wedge, it was just far too much. Uh, the golfer wanted a particular swing weight across all the wedges. That's what he got now. Now I had to go in there, pop this thing off, take the weight out. It's just right. The other issue is that the three and the four iron were extraordinarily light. And I looked at it, it didn't look that bad, but apparently when you go to <laughs> put reality on the swing weight scale, it, it was really too light. So I took out the, the light weight and I put in a heavier weight. Now, it's still light, okay? This is one of those that's still very, very light and I put in a much bigger weight, but I didn't want to put in such a big weight that it would affect the way that this thing will play. So we left it as it, as it is. What will have to happen is, we're going to have to, he's going to have to put in some weights down in here to, to wait to the feel. Because if you put in too much weight, it'll just affect the way that it plays. And that's not what we want. We want it to play as designed. So you, you can always put too much in. All right, so now all the weights are the same. And what we ended up doing is, so it, the hosel takes a special centering hosel, okay? If you want to see, the, I did another PXG build, and we'll put up a link right over here. And you can see what I did with the, with the ferrule. Now on the grip, we're actually using white pure grips. And it's in the, it's their pro model. It's basically like a tour velvet. And what we did is we built it up. So we put a layer on here and then another layer here to build up this section and then our grip tape. And then that's what we've got. And it's a good feel. It's a nice sticky type feel. And, it, and because of the rubber that it's made out of, it will certainly feel better, particularly if you got sweaty hands. So it's a not, it's not a bad little setup. Now the oddball thing I told you about earlier that was going to be something that you needed to see was he asked for the logos to be shaft up. We got to put these shaft logos, labels, logos, labels, and we got to put them in there so that they look decent, right? So they look decent all the way up. So now the real, the question, so there's a hundred questions. Do you put it like that? Do you put it like that? All right. I put it so the way that you would normally read it. Now, what do you, how do you do this? Well, we're going to kind of do it backwards here. Hopefully you see it. So what I do is I measure from here to here. And then I just put the, I put the logo right there. All right, now the real trick is to make sure that it is square. So I just put the lettering to the lettering, and there we are. And you rub up and down to make sure all, there's no wrinkles. Now, now, if you wanted to be a little bit more, I'll say precise, you could get out a ruler and take a little Sharpie mark and make sure it's on the same spot, but in effect, it's gonna be the same thing. So we start here close. I mark it with my finger, making sure that you can see that. And then I line the, the letter of the K to the letter of the tour, and we are down the middle. All right. And then we make sure there's no wrinkles. Okay. So that's throwing these PXGs together, taking them apart and putting them together in a nutshell. We're going to have to do loft and lies on them. And I put a coat of wax on them, make sure that everything looks good. We'll take some pictures. You'll probably see it on Instagram. And that's the way that one goes. 
So if, if guys, if you're doing some club building or if you, you know, get a set that you need tweaked or whatever, give us a call at golf shop at roadrunner.com or clubmaker at mcgolf.net. It is working now. I've switched it over to a more reliable web provider. And uh, we can help you out, right? We'll get you taken care of. If you're a, a hobbyist and you get a little bit out of your depth and you need some help, uh, let us know and we'll help you out through that as well. And as always, guys, let's see your scores go low.